Hey there, welcome back guys. It's going to be a short video on the basic configuration and setup for the Pablo 25 so you can get it up and running and into the air. So what you want to do is open up Betaflight, whichever version you have. In this case, I'm using Betaflight Configurator 10. Most likely this should work in all versions and this is going to just be a quick setup. Or you can, if you don't want to set it up, if your Betaflight isn't working or your computer has crashed, um, you can always download it from... Uh, um, the uh, GitHub repository, and as you can see, uh, I just launched my beta flight, but it didn't load. So if you have a similar experience, you might be forced to download or downgrade and upgrade again. All right. So what you're going to do is connect, and you can see right there. See that? Um, it means that's my beta flight. That's my drone, my STM3 something, and I click connect. I'm just going to run down the ports really quick. We have our setup. We have our ports. We, okay, so, and then we have configuration, we have power and battery, presets, PID, tuning, receiver. Okay, they'll just go down all of them one at a time. So this is the setup. Feel free to pause. I'm actually going to take a screenshot of this because, as you know, I like adding these to my um, GitHub repository because some folks like to save it. Okay, so as you can see, we have UART2 is on. Okay. And scroll down all the way, peripherals is VTX, MSP, plus display port. See that? But don't touch the other side. It's just auto. Okay. And now we have UART3. See that? All right. So then on um, UART3, um, you can see Serial RX is on. Scroll down. Everything stays like that. Okay. Um, UART4, I'm not sure what that is, but as you can see, UART4 is on and it says ESC um, sensor port. Maybe that's the lights, but I, I didn't do that. Um, so I'm just gonna leave that as is, okay? And then let's see what we have here. Um, and that's it for here, okay? And then configuration, leave it. Uh, you could scroll, well, you don't have to leave it. You might wanna, um, uh, you know, you might have to turn the OSD on, LED strip. It should be on by default because this is oh, straight out of the box, and that's how they had that airport um, air mode. Sorry, on. Um, and if you turn this on, beeps when aux channel is set for beeps, and then beeps when TX. Whoops. Welcome back to everything that glitches. No idea what that is. Um, beeps when TX turn off or signal lost. You can do that if you'd like. But any of these you can turn on. See beeper configuration. So um, I can turn that on for beeping. I can turn arming on for beeping. Whatever you decide, experiment with this and figure out which beeping calibration works right for you. But as long as the beep is on, the um, beep will be activated when you select the key, which we'll get to in the mode section. Um, next up, leave it. Presets, leave it pit tuning we're using the special rates for because i fly a lot indoors more than outdoors with these drones um so these are the indoor rates special thanks to fpv unknown 40 40 40 going down for your center sensitivity and then we have max rate 700 all the way down and then we have for our expo set to 0 0.70 all the way down okay and now we're going to move over to throttle limit is off throttle limit percentage is at 100 Throttle mid is set to 0 0.50, and throttle expo is set to 0 0.40. I'm going to take a screenshot of that. Most likely, I take a screen. Whoops. Oh, wow, that's interesting. That must have taken a screenshot of the whole thing, which is actually pretty good because I can trim it later. All right. So then we have there. Actually, you know what? We will do a screenshot of everything moving forward. One, two, and I can trim it. Three, uh, I think that's at the top, it stops at camera. So we'll stop it at camera, All right? Three and four. Now we have this stays, but you know, some folks might wanna know what I had in there. Uh, actually for this one, I might be able to pull something off. If I do this, there we go. And then we have presets. I'll just take a screenshot of it, but that just stays. You know, that doesn't, I'll just tell them in the show notes. Pit tuning, as you can see, this is here. And then that's there. We'll go back up to um, here, the 
these are the rates you'll see so you can just follow the image if that works well for you um, and then now we're back to receiver uh, receiver hold on one second we'll do that all right so we're at receiver receiver remember this is for the dji fpv remote okay so receiver is serial uh, AI UART, okay, and then down below, make sure that's S bus. Telemetry is off, that's there, and uh, I believe that is it. So let me see if it'll let me. Nope. So I'll just do receiver there. Modes can get a little bit tricky. So uh, let me take a screenshot of that and I'll run it down before I um, continue. R means to get the propellers moving, okay? Angle as a special flight mode, which was aux two. So but to arm it, I have it set to aux one, and you wanna make sure it goes from 1000 to 2000. But just remember, this all depends on your DJI receiver too. So your buttons might be glitchy, and but these are, are given. This is always gonna be from 1000 to 2000, but you wanna double check it by turning your drone on, okay, for the new guy, and then connecting it to your, um, to your uh, receiver, okay? Angle, beeper, um, okay, so angle is aux 2, beeper is aux 3, because aux 3 is a different key, so even though it looks like a similar range, it uses a different key. Um, flip over after crash is aux 4, okay, and then range is here to here. And user 1, that's the light, okay? So that's going to be your little LED, and that turns it on and off, and that is aux 5. Whoops, and um, that's that. So now I'm just going to take a little screenshot of that. You can trim it later. Motors, that stays, but sometimes when you screw stuff up, it's always nice to know what it was so you can put it back to what it is and should be. Um, OSD, give me a second, sorry for the clips. One, whoops, where does that one stop? Crosshair, so I go all the way up and stop at uh, crosshairs. Let's see where is crosshairs. Uh, whoops, right about, just trying to do it so that, um, I can trim it so that those who want to see where crosshairs is, see, that's where I stop. And then I go down again and stop at pilot name. And hopefully it gets me, oh, you know, right there, see pilot name at the top left. Then I scroll down and I believe, yeah, maybe I'll take that one instead. All right, so this is all the stuff that appears inside your goggles, okay? So let's say, for example, watch, I'll make one disappear. Uh, will it disappear? It, see, the, um, the throttle limit is right there, but I don't think it's going to disappear. Unless, oh, see, it disappeared. See that? And so I put it back. Where did it go? See, it's there. But by default, I put it there. So now let's say if I want RC channel, Watch, it appears right there. Well, that one's too complicated. Let me choose a power. Hold on. Where's power? Wait for it. Wait for it. Hold on. Pilot name, maybe? Ah, see pilot name? So pilot name showed up, right? And let's say I want to add pilot name and power. Yeah, okay, it's like, where's power? I don't see it. They're always going to be layered. So what happens is you have, after you choose one, you have to move it. And as you can see, after I move it, the other one shows up next to it. Okay, see that? See? And I just keep showing up behind it. So what you want to do is every time you add something, you want to move it. Okay? So for example, again, so in this case, they're always going to be there, right? Because, um... I put them there so they'll they'll sort of locked into that spot but anything new right like let's say i add vtx and then it showed up there oh there it is and maybe you know what i want to add that and so a lot of times new guys will um just keep adding this stuff and then they're like where is it i don't see it and as you can see they just keep layering on top of each other and then you have to move it see i moved it and see i moved it um and then every time you move it uh a new one automatically appears or populates so I don't need that um, so that's how that works but as you can see I'm not using any of that uh, I do like this though I like to, to know how hot 
my uh, flight controller is getting so that I know when to land, shut it off, etc. And, um, you know, I like to keep everything aligned. This tells you the direction, etc. And that's pretty much it for the OSD setup. Uh, video transmitter, leave it. LED strip, leave it. Uh, black box, leave it. CLI, leave it. Uh, unless you like after you've created all your stuff, your PID rates, etc. What you want to do is a dump all. Dump all. And that will create uh, a file that you can save. So let's say you don't have to do everything we just did all over again. Basically, um, it'll just work. Okay. So I, for example, I just did a dump all. Then I'm going to go save to file and call this my rates. And it'll save to the desktop. And then that's it. And then you look on your desktop and you'll see it. Uh, but in this case, I think I want to add some more things and change some things before I actually put this on the repository and save it and then push it to the um, to the Pablo 25. Anyway, I believe that's it. I hope this video helped you in better understanding on how to set up your Pablo 25 uh, and get it running and up in the air. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below or ideas for other videos. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.